Hey guys, it's your favorite medical channel, Medicosis Perfectionalis, which sounds exactly like pneumatosis intestinalis. In the previous videos, we have discussed osteoarthritis in great detail, but if you don't have enough time or you just want to review, here's the video for you. Osteoarthritis, quick review, and let's get started. As you know, the rheumatological disease could be divided into non-inflammatory such as osteo and inflammatory such as rheumatoid. Osteo has no cardinal signs of inflammation. It's asymmetric, worse in the evening, ESR and CRP are normal. Osteoarthritis is just a biomechanical process. It's non-inflammatory, therefore, no cardinal signs of inflammation, no redness, hotness, swelling, pain, or loss of function, no constitutional symptoms, no fever, no weight loss, no night sweat, etc. Joint pain is worse with use. So as the day progresses with activity, it's gonna get worse. It's asymmetric and there is no elevation of ESR or CRP. The lab tests are normal. Osteoarthritis is non-inflammatory. It's biomechanical. Therefore, it affects weight-bearing joints, the big joints, the hips, the knees, etc. Obesity is a risk factor, of course. Trauma is a risk factor. Manual labor is a risk factor. Chronic insidious disease. Therefore, on joint fluid analysis, the predominant white blood cells are going to be lymphocytes because it's chronic. Joint fluid analysis will give you white blood cells that are more than 200 but less than 2000 because it's non-inflammatory. Morning stiffness for less than 30 minutes because it's non-inflammatory. When we talk about rheumatoid arthritis next, we'll say that the morning stiffness is more than one hour. Why? Because rheumatoid is inflammatory. And in cases of inflammatory arthritis, stiffness predominates. Since osteoarthritis is mechanical, it's not inflammatory, therefore no synovitis. No inflammation, no synovitis. As you get older, your chances of getting osteoarthritis increase exponentially. That's why osteoarthritis, at least primary osteo, is a disease of the elderly. These are the definitions of osteoarthritis. You can read them if you will. Don't forget it's not inflammatory. Degeneration of cartilage. Osteoarthritis can be divided into primary, which is an idiopathic, which means we are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology, has an unknown cause, and secondary, known cause, such as joint trauma, prior inflammatory arthritis. So you can start with an inflammatory arthritis, then you get non-inflammatory arthritis secondary to that. Metabolic disorders, endocrinal disorders, collagen defects, and others, such as osteonecrosis and osteoporosis. So... If you are taking lots of steroids, lots of them, you're at risk of avascular necrosis. When you have avascular necrosis, you're at risk of getting secondary osteoarthritis. That's how it works, and it's sad. Risk factors of osteoarthritis are non-modifiable, stuff that you cannot control, and modifiable stuff that you can control. Non-modifiable, age 6 heredity. Modifiable obesity, occupational trauma, and malalignment. Malalignment such as meniscal tear or meniscal injury, quadriceps weakness, and loss of proprioception. Osteoarthritis is more common in the elderly and more common in women. What's the physiology? You have articular cartilage providing frictionless movement, resistance to tension, and resistance to compression. Normally, articular cartilage does not ossify. Proteoglide can turn over every five years. Pathology. Osteoarthritis affects every extracellular component of the cartilage. Osteoarthritis is not just a cartilage damage. You have damage of cartilage and growth of bone. Here, the articular cartilage does ossify, which is horrible. The cartilage is becoming bone. And you have decreased proteoglide can turn over with age. It takes more than five years to replace the proteoglide cans with new ones. Normally, you have type 2 collagen, but in osteoarthritis, you have matrix metalloproteinase induced by TGF-beta to degrade the type 2 collagen, say goodbye to cartilage. Also, you have proteoglycans, but now you have enzymes to degrade these proteoglycans, say goodbye to cartilage. Osteoarthritis pathophysiology, chondrocytes injury, then early osteo, then late osteo. First, what induced this? The nature versus nurture debate genetic factors and environmental factors. Then you have early osteochondrocytes gone crazy. They pro proliferate, they secrete all of the stuff, inflammatory mediator, collagenase, protease, proteoglycans. Collagenase will destroy collagen, protease will destroy proteins, etc., etc. You have matrix remodeling, secondary inflammatory changes in the synovium and the subchondral bone. Collectively, these are called matrix metalloproteinases or MMPs. 
Then you have delayed osteo, repetitive injury, chronic inflammation, chondrocytes drop out, significant loss of cartilage, significant changes of subchondral bone. In brief, osteoarthritis is cartilage breakdown and bone growth. Bone growth is weird and crazy, including the famous osteophytes. So chondrocyte proliferation, forming clusters, we call this cloning. Then cleavage of collagen two fibers, you have fissures and cliff. Chondrocytes will die, cartilage sloughs off. Then the pieces of cartilage dislodge and tumble into the joint. You have loose bodies inside the joint called joint mice. Now when you have no cartilage, the subchondral bone becomes the new articular surface. More friction on the bone, which is not used to friction, it will grow every bone or hibernation. Sclerosis of the cancellous bone, which is in contact of the cartilage, may they rest in peace. This hibernation will lead to bony overgrowth, leading to osteophyte or osteophytosis, which have mushroom-like. The top initially is covered with cartilage, but these cartilage will ossify. Also, you have bone gaps or fibrous walled cysts. They will collect synovial fluid, and it's kind of weird. So, osteoarthritis is a disease of cartilage loss and bone growth. Osteoarthritis facts and fallacies. Here are the misconceptions, here is the truth. Arthritis can be divided into non-inflammatory such as osteo and inflammatory such as rheumatoid. In case of non-inflammatory, pain predominates. In case of inflammatory arthritis, stiffness predominates. Since osteoarthritis is non-inflammatory, pain will predominate, big time. That's why in cases of osteo, the stiffness lasts only for less than 30 minutes because the pain predominates and not the stiffness. Is the osteo idiopathic or secondary, depending on the age of the patient? Primary osteo usually asymptomatic until 50 years old, so if you have a patient who is 72 years old, it's primary osteo. If you have a kid with osteoarthritis, it's probably going to be secondary osteo, secondary to something else, and please go search for this underlying disease. Clinical picture. Since osteoarthritis is non-inflammatory, pain will predominate. Deep, achy, worse with use, better with rest, worse in the evening because it's a mechanical problem. Well localized and it ranges all of the way to poorly localized or radiating. So it has like a wide spectrum or a gamut of symptoms. No inflammation, therefore no cardinal signs of inflammation, no redness, hotness, swelling, pain or loss of function, no inflammation, no synovitis. And this is different from rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis has the inflammation and has the synovitis. Osteoarthritis is more distal, it affects the distal intraphalangeal joints and the proximal intraphalangeal joints. DIP, PIP, Haberden, Bouchard. So osteo is more distal, osteo in the oasis. Rheumatoid is more proximal, rheumatoid involves the PIP and the MCP. Osteoarthritis spares the wrist, rheumatoid arthritis involves the wrist. Stiffness for less than 30 minutes and you can have all of these kind of symptoms. Don't forget osteophytes will lead to impingement on the spinal foramina and compression of the spinal cord and the roots of the nerve called radiculopathy, radicular pain, muscle spasm, and muscle atrophy. Osteoarthritis involves the cervical and the lumbar spine. Please don't forget it involves the lumbar because weight-bearing joints. Contrast that with rheumatoid arthritis that we will discuss later. Rheumatoid arthritis does not involve the lumbar. Rheumatoid has nothing to do with the weight-bearing joints. Osteoarthritis also involve DIP and PIP. The most commonly affected is the first CMC, carpometacarpal. Osteo can involve the acromioclavicular joint, although this is rare. It can affect your bunion, the first metatarsophalangeal, and same thing as gout. And here's a big question. Did the gout start first or the osteo? It's like the chicken or the egg kind of question. And of course, osteo affects your hip big time because it's a major weight bearing joint. How to diagnose osteo? Mainly clinically by history and physical exam. X-rays may help and you need labs not to diagnose it, but to rule out other diseases. Hashtag pattern recognition. On physical exam, you'll have crepitus, you'll feel the osteophytes, decreased range of motion, passive and active, and you can have non-inflammatory effusion. If you aspire it, the white blood cells are going to be less than 2000 because it's non-inflammatory, and the lymphocytes are going to predominate because it's a chronic disease. These osteophytes can be inflamed. However, osteoarthritis has no systemic inflammation. If you find inflammation, it's very local. And of course, you will find the Heberden and the DIP, Bouchard, the PIP, and the first CMC. 
Let's go to the lab. Blood tests, everything is normal. ANA may be positive, but who cares? Joint fluid analysis, not so normal. Volume is more than 3.5, that's the de definition of effusion. Clarity is transparent, color is yellow. White blood cells, more than 200, but less than 2,000. How about rheumatoid arthritis? Rheumatoid arthritis is gonna be more than 2,000. In osteo, PMNs are less than 25%. Why? Because it's a chronic problem. Lymphocytes predominate. Culture is negative. There is no bacteria. Shut up. Radiology. Osteo is asymmetric, aka non-concentric. So on x-ray, you have asymmetric joint involvement. Asymmetric between the two joints. This is not the same as this. And asymmetric within the same joint. This side is not the same as this side. Very asymmetrical. Subchondral sclerosis, because the bone's trying to grow, growing osteophytes. Joint space, joint space is gonna narrow, why? There is no cartilage, and the bony projections are decreasing the joint space. Bone enlargement, of course, that's osteophytes, and hibernation, not to be confused with ubernation. If you want more information about osteo and about rheumatoid than included in these videos, you can go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Just for one dollar, you get notes about these. You get also notes about aspirin, about other stuff. And I'll discuss in the PDF something called the likelihood ratio, which is something in biostatistics that's very important. If you love medical mnemonics, try Picmonic and see the link in the description. They are amazing. Thank you so much guys for watching, please subscribe and join the tribe, hit the bell to get notified, go to Facebook, I have about 100 cases or vignettes there, you can follow me on all of these platforms, make sure you follow me on more than one platform please, go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis to get all of my PDF notes, including these illustrations and these videos that I'm doing right now, they are all available in PDF form, so that even if you have no internet connections, they are yours, you can download them and print them and enjoy patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfect Nails, where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.